Dearly beloved, we are truly blessed to have you uh, once again join us in our study of God's holy and uh, divine word. I'm evangelist and teacher Joseph A. Brown. Uh, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. It's a day that you have provided for us, a day that you have blessed us in, Father. We thank you for all that you have done thus far. We ask for your continual guidance, Father, and protection, Father, as we traverse through this earth. Father God, we need you because, Father God, there are many pitfalls in so many areas, Father. But you are able to keep us, Father, and we thank you for it, Father. Father God, we ask that you open up our minds and our understanding uh, that we understand your word and what your will is for us in this earth, Father. We truly thank you and praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen and praise God. Dearly beloved, I want you to know today that we are truly, truly blessed to have you with us in the study of God's Word. We've been studying from the thought of the perfect prayer and this is part two of the big from the beginning of, of the perfect prayer uh, we really believe that god has a way uh, that he desired to communicate with his children those who are his and we said that in our earlier study that the father desired for us to take our position and our place in order that we might pray to him and communicate with him. That's all prayer simply is, communication. Communication with the Heavenly Father through the Holy and Divine Spirit. We said that there is one mediator between God and man, and that is the man of Christ Jesus. There is no one else that you and I can pray to or through other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. So we have to understand this, that he was sharing with them the behavior that they ought to have when they pray, the attitude that they need to have when they pray, and the direction they ought to be praying. Amen? Glory be to God. We talked about the prayer closet, how we need to find a special place within our homes or wherever it may be that we're at, apartment, uh, tenement home, wherever. But we need to find a special place where we can communicate with the Father and shut everything out. All those things that fill our minds many times, we need to shut it out in order that we might be able to pray in an effective manner. Dearly beloved, it's about getting your prayers heard. It's more than just uh, say that I'm saying some prayers and I said a lot of prayers. That's not how you communicate with someone. You communicate with them by speaking in a concise manner with an understanding, first of all, in what you are saying and what you are asking for. And from that, our Father is able to hear you. And when He hears you, He responds to you by faith. Amen? Glory be to God. Because He is looking at your faith. Not the much words that you're speaking or how eloquent they might be, but rather he is concerned about if it is mixed in with faith. Because faith is what moves our God. Nothing else does. You can weep, you can cry, you can be frustrated when you're praying and all these things, but if it is not mixed with faith, it will not be heard. Simple as that, dearly beloved. Amen. Glory be to the living God. We have been studying from Matthew, the sixth chapter, and we have come to the seventh verse. 
And what we want to look at at this moment is, as the word says in the seventh verse, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions. So in order for us to be in the right position, in order to communicate effectively with our God and our Father, Jesus said, do not do this. Do not use vain repetitions. In other words, saying the same things over and over again. Because that does not move the Father. That's why he's saying these things. He's sharing with us so that we can get the Father to move on our behalf. If we don't want to be the Father to move on our behalf, then we simply will do the things that he told us not to do. And one of them is this here, that we come to him with vain repetitions, saying the same words verbally over and over again, or in our minds again and again. And dearly beloved, that is not the way the Father desire for us to approach him. Amen? And this is what Jesus is sharing. Now, he is sharing this because evidently he has experienced it, he has seen it, he's aware of it, and he realized that those who are following him were aware of it also and may have been practicing uh, repetitious praying. So he said, don't do that. That is not the right thing to do. Amen? So, dearly beloved, if we want the Father to hear our communication to Him, let's not do vain repetitions. And look what Jesus goes farther on and say, as the heathen do. He says, you have seen the heathen pray that way, and some of you are even praying that way with vain repetitions, saying the same words over and over again. Just think about it for a moment, dearly beloved. If you want to communicate with someone, do you keep saying the same thing over and over and over with that to that person's that person? If you ask a person, "Will you get me a cup of coffee?" and then the next uh, 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 two seconds you say, "Get me a cup of coffee." Will you please give me a cup of coffee? Will you please give me a cup of coffee? Will you please give me a cup of coffee? They will have you quickly put into a straight jacket and uh, march you off to the home uh, that they desire for you to be. Dearly beloved, Jesus was letting his disciples know this is not the right thing to do. This is not the right manner that you ought to pray at all. Saying the same things over and over again. Because our Father can decipher what you are saying. And remember this, dearly beloved. The Lord knoweth your heart. So no matter how many words you speak, it doesn't really matter. Because the Father knows where your heart is coming from. But He says the heathen does those things. Do you want to align yourself with the heathens? What is a heathen? A heathen is an unbeliever, one who doesn't really know the true God. He may be praying somewhere, he may be praying repetitiously, but he doesn't really know the Father. So Jesus is saying, if you know the Father and you're aware who the Father really is, then do not pray in that manner where you pray the same things over and over again, because then you are identifying yourself with the heathen. So if you do that today, dearly beloved, and you have been doing that, then you need to cut that out right now. You need to walk away from that. You need to realize and recognize this is not what the Lord wants me to do. Because if I do it that way, he looks upon me as a heathen. 
And if you are a child of God and you are continuously doing that, then the Lord is not pleased with it. So you believe that the Lord will answer your prayer when he's not pleased the way that you are praying to him? I don't believe, dearly beloved. Even if you had access, as I said earlier, a person, will you give me a cup of coffee? Will you give me a cup of coffee? Eventually, what would happen? You would aggravate that person. That person would say to you, I hear you. I know what you want. I know what you need. Why you keep repeating yourself like a broken record? Why are you doing that? And I believe that's the same way the Father looks at it. You know me as your father. Why do you keep repeating the same things over and over again? That's what the heathen do. I can hear you. I know what you want even before you ask it. So don't come to me in that manner and that fashion because I will shut it off. I will not hear that kind of prayer. So dearly beloved, let us recognize that, that we desire to pray the way the Lord desires for us to pray, not the way we might have been trained from our youth, but rather we want to pray in the fashion and the manner that God desires for us to pray. Now I know we may have some habits, and we have done this for years and years and years, and you may say to me this day, Man, I'm 65 years old. I'm 70. I'm 80 years old. How can I change now? By simply changing. By simply recognizing. By simply knowing that you're listening to this program today. Because God wants to speak to you right now in your heart. To let you know that this is not the way that you communicate with me. And you ought to be willing to change no matter what. And be able to pray to him in a way as though you're speaking to someone. Amen? Glory be to the living God. And you are capable. You can do this. You can break away from the traditions of men. And begin to hear and to recognize the voice of the Father. You might say today, I haven't heard the voice of the Father. Well, I can say this to you. If you're praying repetitiously, you'll never hear the voice of the Father. But when you speak to Him and be willing to hear Him speak back to you, then you will hear the voice of the Father in your spirit. Amen? For the Word says, For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. They're speaking much, and there are traditions that do that. Traditions that believe that they are uh, Christian uh, uh, traditions. And there are those who are not Christians who do such a thing. But the Lord says they do that simply because they believe that if they pray enough, and they pray hard enough, saying the same things over and over again, then ultimately God will get it. Well, dearly beloved, let me say to you in the name of Jesus Christ, he is not getting it because he does not want you to approach him in that fashion. And this is the reason why Jesus took time to share with his disciples even before he began to show them what they should pray. He was showing them how they, sh how they should pray. And putting themselves in the right position before the Father. And that's so very important. That when before we come to the Lord, we must come to Him in the proper way, in the proper fashion. In order that we know that He will hear our cry unto Him. The word says also, Be not ye therefore like unto them, like unto the heathens, the lost those who don't truly know the Lord. For your Father, glory be to God, know it what things you have need of before you ask Him. Glory be to the living God. The Father knows the things that you have need of even before you ask 
him. Glory be to the living God. Dearly beloved, that is a revolutionary thought for the disciples. You and I know that now, and we can look at it in hindsight. But remember, the disciples were looking at this as being very new and in their foresight in how they were to begin to seek the Father in a proper fashion so that they could find their prayers being answered in the same manner that Jesus Christ's prayers were being answered. That's why, dearly beloved, they wanted to know how to pray. They had accepted uh, their other way of praying the way they may have been taught. They had accepted the prayer fashion of even some of what the heathens were doing. And they found some uh, satisfaction in that. But when they began to look upon the Lord Jesus Christ and began to see how he got alone with the Father in his secret places, <clears throat> and when he spoke to the Father, they realized that the Father was answering him from heaven. They knew that their prayers were not being answered that way. They were very aware, aware of that. And so they wanted to know exactly how do you pray that you get the answers that you get, Jesus. We want to know. We want that availability. And for, for Jesus to say to them, uh, the Father knoweth what things you have need of. Right there was revolutionary when he said that. Because many times they came to God as God as Jehovah, as Adonai, as in that fashion. They did not know him as their father because Jesus Christ was getting them to a place of realizing that because of who he was, he knew who his father was. Now he wanted to put them in position and in place in their thinking that they would realize now, since you are a follower of me, and you have come to know me, and you have now <clears throat> been born of the Spirit of God, you now can call the same one Father that I call Father. Dearly beloved, that was revolutionary to the minds of the disciples. You mean that we can call God our Father? You mean we don't have to pray repetitiously and say many prayers in our uh, desire to get to know Him? You mean simply we can speak to Him just as we're speaking to you? Absolutely. And that's what Jesus Christ wanted them to know. The new intimacy that they now had with the Father. Dearly beloved, that's the same intimacy that we have. It is so intimate that even before we pray, the Lord knows what we have need of. Amen? He already knows what we have need of. When you woke up in the morning, the Father knew exactly how to prepare your day. He knew exactly how to order your steps. He knew exactly the, uh, what your needs were for the day that you're living. Dearly beloved, he knows. And you see, the disciples weren't aware of the Father in that manner and that fashion. But here they were, coming to a place of understanding the Father in, an old, in, a, in, a, in a different way, in a different manner, but in a more intimate and personal way. The more you and I pray, and pray in the fashion that the Lord asks us to, the more you and I will be able to get the things that the Father wants for us, that we might be able to be a reconciler of those who do not know Him from the pardon 
of their sins. So the word let us know that he knoweth the things that we have need of, and he know them before we even ask him. Now in the ninth verse, the word of God says, After this manner, therefore pray you. Amen? So there is a manner in order the way we should pray. Amen? Now there is an, an important statement there. Because the Lord wants us to be intimate in our prayer. We're going we're gonna to read through this prayer. And, I, and then we're going to come back over and study this prayer in a way that you can make it more personal for yourself rather than uh, to just pray this prayer in a rote fashion. And the reason I say that, remember this, when Jesus Christ was speaking to the disciples and those who were gathered around, he was speaking to them as a unit. Amen? They were there all together. So the Lord Jesus Christ was simply saying to them, when you come together, pray in this a manner with this attitude with this focus so he used it in a uh, in a, 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 a double way in another way in duplicity uh, is a better word for it in duplicity he speaks to them that they hear the words that he is speaking and the manner in which he wants them to pray and let, let us read that prayer and after this manner, therefore pray you, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the living God. Now I want to read a little bit farther what he says. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Amen? Glory be to the living God. And dearly beloved, so even from the very beginning, we have to recognize this, even before we began to pray, we have to be willing to forgive our, uh, uh, those who have trespassed against us, even as the Father has trespassed, even as the Father has forgiven our trespasses. Amen? So we need to come to the Father in a way, in a fashion, that we have made things right. Amen? There's an example in the Scriptures where this particular man uh, came before the Lord. And instead of him making it right, he just began to pray. But then there was another who before he began to pray and to uh, call out the name of the Lord, what he did was he left his offering at the altar. You remember we're still living in the Old Covenant time, the Old Testament back when Jesus was speaking. And what he did was, he went and made it right with his brother or uh, that other individual. So we have to be willing to make things right. So that way we can come before the Lord in the right way. Do not believe that the Lord does not know what you are and who you are and your heart and the things that you have done or the, the trespasses you have not forgiven others who have trespassed against you. The Father knows that. And many times our prayers are not answered if we are praying in a proper fashion because we have not forgiven someone. 
We have not made it right. Dearly beloved, if Jesus Christ could go to the cross and die for us, then you and I ought to be willing to forgive people who have trespassed against us, who have literally sinned against us, and may have even caused us harm. We have to be willing to forgive anyway. Because it was Jesus who looked down from the cross at those who was crucifying him and said to his father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I can say to you today, when someone comes against a child of God, they really do not know what they are doing. That God will hold them accountable one day. Amen. Dearly beloved, the Lord bless you. We're going to make this prayer a very personal prayer. And that you get an understanding of it. And I pray that you will continue to join us as we delve deeply into God's holy and divine word. And join us on Sunday mornings between the hours of 6 and 10 uh, a.m. Um, at 92.7 KZJM or you can hear us online at www.927kzjm.org where we are sharing the teach word of our Father. Amen? And we are studying through the word of God. So that way you will get a fuller understanding of what the Lord has for you and what he desires for you to walk in these last and uh, final days. Dearly beloved, the Lord bless you and our Lord keep you. And always remember, it is not the word that you know, but the word that you understand that will get you the victory in Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you.